The Art Folk Foundation began in 1975, and it was really the brainchild of two Art Colons, Jerry Stout, who in 1975 worked in the Trust Department of the First National Bank of Arcola, and Joe Monahan, who was president of the First National Bank of Arcola at that time. And they were interested in organizing something that could make Arcola an even better place to live. And they came up with the idea of a possible foundation. Jerry had worked in Ohio before coming to Arcola, and he had worked with a foundation there. And he thought that that type of thing might be possible here. And when it received its tax exempt status in 1975, the foundation became a reality. Donors saw and they continue to see the amount of good that can happen in a community with a foundation such as this. The disbursements of the foundation come from the assets. The principal stays intact so that the foundation can continue in perpetuity. So it's a wonderful thing for the community. Some of the community projects that have been made possible in part because of the foundation include the school edition, the one-to-one -one project, which made sure that there is an iPad in the hand of each and every student in the Arcola schools. The Arcola Center, donations to make an Arcola Center possible. We also do things like sending kids to Boys State and Girls State. Uh, the addition to the Arcola Library was partially made possible because of the Arcola Foundation. The band boosters, the Arcola Fire Protection District's new building was partially made possible because of the foundation. The Lions Club, the Douglas County Museum, the Raggedy Ann Memorial Project, the list goes on and on. In 2016 alone, the foundation gave over $30,000 in scholarships to 37 students. Total disbursements within the community in uh, 2016 were over $221,000. So it, it's just almost unbelievable that a community of this size can have these kinds of projects that do so good for so many people in the town. I think the foundation is a good example of something that we can be proud of now and in the future because it was really set up to make sure that future citizens of Arcola also had some of the things that many people in small towns just don't have. You know, Arcola is a wonderful place to live, but it's even a better place to live because of all of the things that the foundation has made possible and helps to make possible and continues to work on. It starts with Bob Muma. Bob Muma, a citizen of Arcola, uh, he was a sign painter, he was a father, he was an artist, he was a railroader, and he was very, very protective of his First Amendment rights, all constitutional rights, but especially the First Amendment rights. In the 80s, Bob had a habit of uh, expressing his First Amendment rights, usually on four by eight sheets of plywood. Initially, Bob's sign shop, which was just the other side of the tra tracks west of downtown, he would post these signs on the outside of his, on the outside of his shop. Some say that um, the city fathers came by and reminded him it might be a good idea to have a fence next to his business. Some say that the thinking was that that fence might make the, hard, the signs harder to see. Bob built the fence, just a common wooden fence, and of course the first thing Bob did was move the signs from the side of his shop to the outside of the fence so they're even easier to see. A wooden fence is erected, and Bob also got into the oil drilling business late in life. Um, city fathers came by and suggested to Bob that since he could see the oil rig above the fence, it might be time to make the fence a little bit higher. Rather than <laughs> uh, make the fence higher between the two buildings, he went ahead and it's the birth of the Hippie Memorial. Hippie Memorial is constructed of scrap oil well pipe, uh, some sca scrap steel rods, uh, a lot of automobile parts, and miscellaneous and sundry recycled products. Hippie Memorial was completed at that location in 1992. Uh, unfortunately, Bob passed away in 1998. The business was sold and the 
Hippie Memorial, the upper section of the fence was taken down. Bob's friend, Gus Kelsey, rescued the fence. It was loaded into an empty beer truck, uh, hauled north, stored in a beer warehouse while the local citizens, especially Gus Kelsey, got involved in a fundraiser for the base that it presently sits on. In 1999, the base was erected on Oak Street, uh, not the original location of the Hippie Memorial. The art was placed on top of the base and the dedication ceremony was in 1999 in July. Hippie Memorial con consists of 10 different panels of varying sizes. The first three panels represent the first 25 years of Bob's life, post-World War II America. Bob found that stifling. The first three panels are drab. The first three panels have lots of rust and not order much ornamentation. Bob's words, post-World War II, it was like living in a coal mine with three-foot ceilings. The tallest man I ever met was three feet tall. Society forced people to stoop. Interestingly enough, the first three panels are indeed three feet tall. Next two panels are twice the height. Bob's interpretation was allowed people to stand up, stand up against oppression. They're brightly colored, representing individuality. They represent the era of the Kennedy administration, civil rights, and the hippie movement. The next five panels neck down. They represent the 80s. Bob was not real enamored with the performance of Reagan and especially of Forbes. They're featured in many of the signs that were on the sign shop or the fence next to the sign shop. Not much ornamentation on the last five panels and very, very drab. Interestingly enough, in Bob's words, to my shame, I was no hippie, although he really embraced the hippie movement and the freedom that it brought. Although Bob passed away, his legacy lives on in the hippie memorial. stories back in the old day you, you know you talk to some people who have been around and uh, my parents and, and their friends and you really you, you get a good sense for a lot of the the, the history and the, the lore and the you know the tradition and we had uh, Helen Keller who came to Arcola in the early 1900s she was here to attend a Chautauqua festival Charles Lindbergh dropped in unexpectedly so the story I've been told is he he did actually have to land nearby. His plane was, uh, he had some trouble and, and uh, so landed here, came to Arcola. Um, he used to deliver mail between, uh, from St. Louis and Chicago and so it was his, his uh, trip to town. Uh, Ozzy and Harriet, the, the famous television show back in the 50s and 60s, the stars. Uh, Lawrence Welk was, was, came to town. You know, huge name back in the day, Lawrence Welk. I can remember um, with my you know, watching him on TV with my grandparents. Back in the 1940s, we had uh, Ella Fitzgerald came to town, and uh, she uh, was with a, a group and uh, stopped in and went, went to a restaurant to eat and was very appreciative of the, the way they were treated. In fact, at the end of the meal, she got up and sang as a tribute to the, the, the good service that she had had. It was Dave Barry, the famous author and, and comedian, uh, he came to Arcola. He was invited to come up uh, to the Broomcorn Festival Parade and, and end up marching with the Lawn Rangers. And uh, that was a lot of fun. He's quite a character himself and uh, fit in very well with the, with the Lawn Rangers. So. One of the things that really draws a lot of uh, celebrities here is the Broomcorn Festival itself. We've had a lot of big names uh, come through the years here. Uh, Tracy Lawrence, Mark Chestnut, John Michael Montgomery, Neil McCoy, uh, they were all here. A couple years ago we had the Henningsons, the group from, from Atwood, so they were here and uh, did a great job. Had a really big crowd, you know, local crowd with it from uh, stars from the area. One, probably the biggest name to, to come to the uh, Broomcorn Festival was Garth Brooks. And uh, he was here a, th uh, a few years back. This was back before he kind of hit the real big time and become a, a superstar, but coincidentally after he comes to Arcola, then his career, you know, skyrockets and he becomes the uh, country music legend that he is today. You know, not every town has the the fortune, good fortune of having, uh, you know, some of the people that I've mentioned, you know, to come through. And it's just it's it's just kind of a neat, unique character I think that uh, Arcola has to, as a part of its story and its history and tradition. Waldogs have been around about. Um, and I tell this a little bit more in detail later, but they've been around about 23 years now, I believe it is. And they visited 
dozens of communities, not only in Illinois, but throughout the Midwest. They've done somewhere over 500 murals, if you can believe that. And the murals that they do are each of interest to the community that they've selected for their annual visit. It's kind of a loose group of individuals, well over 300 from throughout the United States and other parts of the world. They are artists by either trade, training, or by occupation. They bring their talents to a community annually to highlight that community's history by painting murals on downtown buildings, typically. And those murals always depict things of interest to the local community. Arcola became interested. There was a group called the Arcola Beautification Committee that was um, already involved in numerous projects, but this is one of the larger projects that they ever undertook. And through a series of um, hard work, lots of individual effort, as well as teamwork and cooperation throughout the spirit of the city. Fundraisers were done, uh, the arrangements were made, and the Waldrogs were attracted to Arcola in the summer of 2012. They painted 15 murals throughout downtown, and there's a story behind each one of the murals. They were selected from many dozens of uh, different options that were thought about be to uh, be the murals for downtown Arcola, and these 15 were the final selection based on their importance to the city as well as the region. They spent five days with us, but leading up to this, there were hundreds, if not thousands, of hours of preparation time, both on the Waldogs' part, as well as at the city of Arcola. When the Waldogs descended, we were, uh, if the right word is, engulfed with visitors from throughout the Midwest who came here during a very exciting time as the Waldogs prepared for and then produced the murals that you find. There was great community involvement prior to and during the Waldog visit. But one of the fun things about it was that several local residents were able to participate in painting murals. A number of the local leading citizens were invited or volunteered to paint at least a few brush strokes, if not significant amounts of some of the murals, uh, murals in downtown Arcola. Even after four years, there's still a buzz around town, not only from the local community, but from the visitors that flock here during the, particularly the warmer parts of the year to visit all of the things in Arcola especially the, the uh, beautiful downtown mules. We are back! We have had so much fun tonight. It's not over yet. We still got more people that want to call and we want to be sure we thank them. John from Arcola, Robert from Arcola, and Larry from Arcola. Thank you so thank very you. much. We're up to 83. There's somebody on the phone that's 84. Can we make it to 100? That's our goal for tonight. Let's see. What you, do you have it in you? Well, I think they have it in I know they do. We're all about champions mm -hmm. here tonight, right? Our college we champions? We are the champions. Yes. I mean, a school that is so strong in sports, academically, they're mm -hmm. strong. We've got so many great people that we've already known in Arcola and we've got a lot of more people that we want to get to know. When you call in and you became a member of WEIU, you're in it to win it. We're your family now. So it's not just like you call in, get a DVD, and we say goodbye. We never want to talk to you again. We do. I'm the membership manager here at WEIU. We take that very seriously. You're giving to a PBS station or a non-for-profit. This isn't just, this means a lot to us. It takes a lot to do a program like this. We work super hard, but we want to do it because we want to do it for these small communities. I'm also the publicity promotion specialist for WEIU, and I'm all about promoting Arcola tonight because of all of these amazing volunteer storytellers and underwriters who have supported this program have stepped up and said, we have stories to share. We want people mm -hmm. to know about Arcola and how amazing it is, and all you have to do is call in, help us meet a 100 caller goal tonight. Mm -hmm. We're not that far from oh, it. Oh gosh, we're so close. Who's going to be the next one to call? There's a phone ringing now. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be awesome to end See, this tonight? it's going to happen. I Come can feel on. it. If you've, been on, if you've been waiting all night, the phone number's at the bottom of your screen. We need you to call. So it's not just that we want you to, we need you to call. Our COLA needs you to call. They need to know that what they have stepped up to do means mm -hmm. something to you. Yes. And when you help them reach that goal, that will give them all the pleasure in the mm -hmm. world. Because Mick told me just a minute ago, we have to reach that goal. <laughs> we don't yes. lose. No. Arcola is champions. They are winners. There is mm -hmm. never a goal that they have never met that they don't set their mm -hmm. mind to. We are going to meet 100 tonight. I, just I know it. You keep calling. Yeah, I just got goosebumps. You know what that means? That means we're going to hit the 100. Yep. I know we are because when I get goosebumps, that's telling me something good is just about to happen here in WEIU in our studio right here on campus of Eastern Illinois University because Arcola, you are truly amazing.
Absolutely, and I've been so honored to be a part of this program, to get to know all these wonderful people. We know them by first name basis now. We get hugs from them. We get to see them in their communities. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all of these phones are starting to ring right now. Mm -hmm. If on. you know them, if they're your neighbors, if they're your friends, if you have worked with them, if they're your family, you call in and you say thank <laughs> you. It's making me emotional right now because there's always this part of a program where we start hitting the end and everybody steps up and says thank mm -hmm. you. We, when we think about everybody who knows everybody, what about Dr. Errol? And what did he tell you all ago? Because you're supposed to remember his story. He told me that um, one of the Pullen, where's Dr. Ronnie, Errol? Ronnie, Ronnie Pullen's, Ronnie, Ronnie Gears. no, Ronnie Gears. Who that's, was it? That's Ronnie Gears. Ge okay. Uh, yes, okay. Ronnie Gear was one of the sons of one of the Gear brothers. Yes. And he called in and he was Dr. Errol's first patient. And when Dr. Errol retired, the girls in the office made sure that he was his last patient. That's and special. he called in to get a copy of a DVD Aww. tonight. Don't you be crying. I know. Come on, get the <laughs> call and we learn to cry. No, but that just does show that this is, um, this kind of a program just touches our heart. Mm -hmm. It's not something we can fake. It's not, that's not who we are. People keep on asking, how do you girls stay going? Because we know, we believe in what WEIU mm -hmm. does for these communities. We could not do it without the underwriting mm -hmm. support from our, this program for the people that call in. And then we can give a gift back to you, which is a DVD of the special program. We wanted to get to 100 tonight. Yep. We are so close. So close. And you know what? We want to get there, but if we don't, we still love you, but we still want you to call tonight. We would love to get up to 100, because talk about celebrate. We want to bring all our storytellers that are in here tonight to yeah, come Yeah, we're forward. going to here yes, momentarily. We We've got some more thank yous yes, coming we do. in over here. I'll tell you what, I'm not the only one tearing up in the house. We've got some people over there that are tearing up as well, and I've got a thank you back here. We've got Bob from Arcola. Thank you, Bob. We've got Greg from Arcola, and we have Julie from Matt Toon. Thank you, Thank you so much so for supporting much. the Arcola Storytellers. Now, we got something special. Some ladies over here are sitting here, and she's wanting to talk to you, possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let and me walk on over go here. Go over, and you talk to her. So I have a special lady right here who has a love affair with the depot. Is that right? Yes. That's what you told us earlier, yeah. right? This is Alice Rippey. Alice, talk to us about the experience and being a part of this program. Well, it's really been a lot of fun. And I was scared to death when we first started out. And, and uh, you know, I wrote everything down and had my notes and all ready. And then uh, Keenan says, put your notes down there on that little table. If you need them, pick them up. Well, by the time she got done with me, I didn't even know what was in that. Mm -hmm. I just talked and talked and talked and talked, answered her questions. Yeah, she so did. You really, did a great job. Yeah, and we've been, just had a blast, really a lot of fun. And interesting to hear what everybody else has got to say. And, you know, a lot of those stories I've been telling for years, and some of them I've been right on, and some of them I'm not right on. So I, now i got to do some <laughs> rewriting of my stories that we have at the depot. Well, every day is an education, yep, isn't it? it sure is. Yes, sure it is. is. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You've been and a special welcome. part of this. You've helped us out a lot. You've allowed us into the depot to take photos and gain a lot of local history, and it's really made this program much more better than, than what we were able to get with the photos and different oh, things like you. that. So thank you yeah. so much for being a part of that. Oh, thank you so much. What a sweet woman. We very much thank you. And, you know, think about how fortunate Arcola is to have her at the tourism office. And I know now her sister's somewhat involved, too, I think, right? Your sister? So there's two sisters there willing to meet you at the depot and really tell you a lot about what's going on. The phones are really quiet. We've just got a few minutes left tonight before it's the end of the program and got another thank you. We do. We have Sandy from Springfield. We've had a couple of people call in from thank Springfield you. tonight. Yes, we have. We've had people call in from out of state. Mm -hmm. We've had people call in from out of uh, the area, out of, outside mm -hmm. of Arcola. Lots of communities have called Gosh. in tonight. Keep them coming. We are so proud of Arcola and all the people that have called in support of this program. You know, we want to end this night on a, a, a good, good end because you know what? We've had a fun tonight and we love that you stepped up, you the people that love this great town of amazing Arcola, and we want to be sure we thank you, we thank our underwriters, mm -hmm. we want to thank Monocles and Shelly Salsa mm -hmm. as well. We could not have had this beautiful live night here tonight without everybody that's involved, without all of our storytellers that are here tonight. You're, you're very, very special to us, and um, we just want to give a huge hug to you. If we could reach out there to the TV and hug all of you, we would do that. 
We love doing this type of program. It means a lot to WEIU to be your public uh, broadcasting station. So thank you so much for tuning in this evening. You can still get copies of the DVD right there. You see one copy is $75, two or more are $60 each. We still have people standing by yeah. to answer your phone. And we have another um, thank you just here. Okay, well, who do we have? We have Alice from Arcola is uh, number 88. Come on, let this We've got call. a few more people calling in here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be with you a couple more yes. minutes. If you are sitting there saying, you know what, I don't know, maybe I want a DVD. I, right now is the time to call. We are going to get all of the people in the studio yes. up here with us. Yes. Come on up. Yep. All of our friends, all the storytellers, yes. the underwriters, come on over yes. from the living room section. We've hey. got Larry Bushu, Larry we've got Bushu Harold Good, here. Pat Monahan, Terry Miller, Carolyn Cloyd. Um, who else is over there that wants to join uh, us? We've got people back here behind us. Pat's wife is over there. Have These folks are staying here with us tonight. They've been here all evening long. We've had a party in the studio, and they want to thank you as well. So everybody, go, get yeah, on in here. here. Come on. Everybody come. We're all family. Come, come on. We're all all the people of the phone so banks, you guys want to come on come up on. here too? These are the people that made Arcola This Is Our Story happen. We have had a full house tonight. Mm -hmm. Some people had to leave, but you know what? We've had some people that are stuck around. An amazing Arcola pulled it through tonight. Yay. Very good. We thank you for all calling. Right, right. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching our Cola. This is our story. We are going to have some rebroadcast tonight. It's happening again at 10 o'clock and a couple of times over the weekend. Tune in online as well at weiu.net. Thank you, everybody. Our Cola is amazing. Woo <laughs>
And the tales of her and Andy are told throughout the land. And in the month of May, we'll celebrate with the Gruel family the raggedy and festival at Exit 203. At Exit 203, you can have yourself a ball with all your friends at the football game, the Blue Corn Festival. The fellowship at the coffee breaks are crazy as can be. But the people here have what it takes at Exit 203. Now our cola isn't very big, 2,700 strong. So rich some poor, some good and bad, the usual right and wrong. But if you ever need a friend, there's no better place to be. You can always get a helping hand at Exit 203. At Exit 203, you can have yourself a ball. With all your friends at the football game, the Blue Corn Festival. Fellowship at the coffee breaks are crazy as can be. But the people here have what it takes at Exit 203.